Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. I'd say welcome back to The Ted Show, but this is actually a separate series. We're gonna have our own logo. This is Real Estate Success Through Progressive Lending. Uh, Kevin came up with that title and I think it's so cool because that's exactly what we do with our realtor partners on a daily basis. We help them be more successful because of our progressive lending approach to things. And so I have on with me every week, the one and only Kevin Roller, the head, the guru, the El Jefe of the Roller Mortgage team uh, at Leader One. Super excited to have him on here and super excited to be part of his team. Welcome, Kevin. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Good morning, Ted. How are you doing, bud? Good morning. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I've been looking forward to this. You have so much knowledge up there in that head of yours, and um, I want all of the people to see it and hear about it. And so every week, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in the mortgage world. Uh, we'll remind you about soft credit pulls, which Kevin will cover, and then we'll talk about a particular product, maybe a loan product. And so as you guys are watching this, if you think of loan products you want to learn more about, please uh, comment or DM me or text me. Uh, we'd love to talk about whatever is on your plate. All right, Kevin, so give us a little mortgage. What's happening in the mortgage world right now? Well, as a lot of people have heard, rates are slated to come down in September, middle of September. Um, now it's not mortgage rates that are slated to come down. It's the it's the overnight funds rate, right? So it's the it, it's going to affect home up to your line of credits, commercial loans, installment loans, um, so your automobile loans, stuff like that. That that rate should drop. But there is a correlation between the, the mortgage backed security market and the federal funds rate. So we should we're already seeing the rates drop, and we'll continue to hopefully continue to see them come down. Um, I was able to give one guy. A rate in the low sixes, I think it was six point, and I say guy, it's a girl. But anyways, I was able to give her 6.375 um, on an investment property. Wow. That's, that's a crazy rate. Wow. I mean, yeah. We're seeing some people getting the fives on primaries, yeah. um, depending on the program, down payment, FICO score, whatnot. So rates have definitely moved down a lot. So what does that mean for, for the real estate market? Yes. I, every time the interest rate drops by 1%, about a million more people qualify to buy. Yeah. So we've seen it as high as almost 8%. And now we're seeing it come down to, let's call it six. So we're seeing about a 2% drop. That means there's 2 million more people that, that are eligible. And as the media puts it out and people hear and they, you know, they start getting pre-approved, there's going to be pressure in the market. Um, that pressure is going to push prices up. So, now is probably the best time. If there's a, a time to buy, it would be right now. Um, also, you know, refinances. People are, you know, 42% of the applications last week were from refinances. Um, that's a lot of people getting in the that's market. a lot. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it for a, a few reasons. One, to, to lower uh, their interest rate, obviously, right? So some people that bought in the last couple of years, their rate may be in the sevens. Yes. Some people may have been low eights. Um, and honestly, if you can save 1%, it's a good time to refinance, right? Absolutely. So some people are saving 2% right now. So great time to refinance. The other thing would be um, really to do debt consolidation. So some people, even if they're at 4% on their mortgage, um, if, if they can refinance at 6 let's say, uh, they may be able to pay off a home equity line of credit that's at 13%. They may be able to pay off an automobile that's at nine percent. They may be able to pay off some, you know, credit card debt that's maybe at thirty percent. Right. Um, so, the reason you may refinance, even if you're at four or five, and let's say your rate's going to be six, is the blended rate of all of that yes. other debt may be twelve, thirteen percent. So we've been able to here recently save people four, five, six hundred dollars a month by doing a debt consolidation, even though their rate was lower than the current rate. Does that make right. sense? Yes, totally. I think people forget all of those other interest rates they're paying and the amount they're paying on that. And so they are so tunnel vision focused on just the interest rate on their mortgage. So people say, well, I don't want to jump from a four to six. But like you said, you're paying 13% here, some much higher on credit card debt. Uh, there's a lot of debt that's in the 20, 24%. I mean, I, I think it's such a great thing to think about that blended rate 
mm -hmm. uh, and really, really focus on how much money is that going to save you overall? Um, and that's I mean, really cool. Because I don't think people are thinking about that. The average car payment in America right now is like eleven hundred dollars a month. That's crazy. Wow. Um, so you've got cars that are you know just ultra expensive on their interest rate, uh, and the credit card debt really. I've seen people with as high as almost 40% on their credit card. So that's just insane. Yes. You, you will never get out from underneath that. So if you've got equity in your home and we can look at the blended rate and say the blended rates like eight, 9%, and we can put you at six, six and a half, then you're going to save three, three and a half percent on Jeez. whatever that total debt load is. So if it's oh, 300,000, that's $9,000, 3% of 300,000 is nine grand. That's Call it seven hundred dollars a month, right? That's, That's eighty four hundred bucks a year. So, yeah, we can save people a lot of money by doing a little bit of debt consolidation. Love it. All right, so I love that. And if you want more information, obviously you can reach us. I have our website scrolling across there, our our Roller Mortgage Ted website scrolling across the bottom there. Um, let's talk about um, a product. Every week we'll do this. We'll talk about something, maybe something you've been seeing a lot more of. I know Florida is such an interesting market in Central Florida is too. So uh, share with us because we have a lot of products. We offer a lot of opportunity. Again, yeah, this so, is through progressive lending. So we we'll offer a lot of opportunities for our realtor partners. So beyond the standard, you know, conventional and uh, government loans, right? The conventional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and then the FHA, VA, USDA, there's what's called non-QM, a non-qualified mortgage is what that is. So that's all the other products. Um, and what we're seeing a lot of right now is people that are self-employed or 1099 and they write a lot off on their taxes, yes. but they, but they do have a lot of cash flow in their bank statement. Yes. So we're doing a lot of bank statement loans right now for the self-employed borrowers where we just look at their deposits and not their tax return. And that's really affording people the ability to purchase a home without maybe, I don't know paying a lot of money to the government in taxes, right? right? I mean, so for for instance, if somebody makes $100,000 a year on a 1099 income and they write off 90,000, they may not be paying much, if, if anything, in taxes after a standard deduction or, or itemized deductions, right? Um, but if you claimed all that income and you're in a 30% tax bracket, then you're paying $30,000. Yes. Right, so I understand if you have the ability to write off your income, writing it off so that you, don't pay that $30,000 in taxes. If you can get around even 15 of it, right? But the problem is when you go to get a traditional loan, they're going to say, oh, you only made $15,000 <laughs> last year. You, you, the maximum house payment you qualify for is like 700 a month. Like, right. right? You're like, no, I really make six figures. So we'll look at the bank statement and the deposits on a personal or a business account. We can't use both. We can use one or the other. We can use multiple business accounts or a personal account um and, and calculate the income based off of the deposits and not cool. what you report to the irs it's such, that's such a big deal it is it's a it big deal big too deal. because if you think about it we're all taught to you know incorporate and and be 1099 is the way to go and so especially think about my our real estate partners uh they're all most of them are all 1099 uh, and you write things off and that's what one of the advantages to being self-employed uh, and so you get down and try to get any financing, though, and you're right, the traditional way of doing it. It looks like you don't have enough money to buy a cup of coffee at the end of the day. If you look at some of those tax returns, yeah. uh, that's that, so is it a is it a more arduous process? People ask that a lot. Well, I mean, I need 12 months bank statements. So as long as you have the ability to log in and download them into a PDF and email them to me, that's the, probably the hardest part. So, no, it's not. Not really. Not any more difficult than doing any other type of lending. Correct. Right. So uh, the any of y'all out there who are the realtors say, oh, that's just a pain. We don't make it a pain. Kevin knows his stuff and our team knows their stuff. And so it's a, it's a process. It's just another part of gathering documents. Yeah. Um, and most people can download straight from their bank their 12 months worth. Do we do 12 and 24? We do. Yeah. And so. I have a, usually a process. I'll start with, I'll say, send me your tax returns anyway, because I want to see if I can, because sometimes I can add back in depreciation. I can add back in mileage. I can add back in use of home. So there may be enough add backs that I can qualify you on a conventional loan, which is a better interest rate. It's okay. lower closing costs. It's just, a, it's a better program. Um, then I'll probably say, hey, that doesn't quite work. Is there somebody that could co-sign for me? 
And if, they, if there's no cosigner and the income doesn't work, but you've got bank statements, then that's that's going to be plan C, really. Right. But it'll get you into the house, right? And the interest right. rate's a little bit higher. Usually it's like a percent higher. The closing costs are a little bit higher. Um, it just depends. That depends on the loan amount, right? Because it's a function of the loan amount. And then, um, um, golly, I was going to say something. I don't remember what I was going to say. It's just such a good opportunity for self-employed buyers. Oh, the uh, down payment. Sorry, the down payment's a little more. I think you have to put a minimum of 10% down. 10% so That changes down. a little bit too, yeah. Correct, correct. See, we have a lot too. And so every week we'll be talking about a product. If you all have self-employed buyers and you're concerned about that for them, or even if you have anything that you think is a unique situation and maybe traditional lending isn't going to fit, let us at least take a look at it. Because like Kevin said, He's going to try to figure out if it can go traditional first and figure out if there are things he can do. And then non-QM uh, products, which we have a, a, a whole menu of, mm -hmm. um, are available to you. And so we want, to, we want you to be able to be more successful. How? Giving you the tools to do it, giving you the product knowledge, giving you access to products that uh, you might have been turned down that we might be able to do in a non-QM world. So. All right, Kevin, I appreciate you. Every week we'll be doing this. You guys One more thing. Oh, yeah. One ahead. more thing. This, uh, so we've been really doing the soft pulls, like really pushing that out. And uh, and it's helping in, in more ways than people realize. So as a realtor, when you send your client to another lender and they pull the credit, if they do a hard credit check, then Equifax sells that data. That's right. So that data may go out to as many as 20 different people that are now calling that client. And that client may get confused because they may start talking with a different lender and a different realtor. And I don't think the average realtor or loan officer understands how much business they're losing to a hard pull because that client gets confused and they end up going another direction. And you think they just stop returning your phone calls. Right. right. You think they just didn't buy. Well, they may be buying with a different realtor and a different loan officer because they got confused after somebody did a hard pull. So the soft pull helps for a couple of reasons. The barrier of entry of somebody saying, I don't want my credit pulled. OK, well, we'll do a soft pull. Right. But beyond that, I think it helps realtors make more money if they use a lender like us who can actually run it through DU and get a, a pre-approval based off of a soft credit to eliminate, I don't know, the vultures out there that are going to harass that client off of a hard pull. So I think I'd, I'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the soft pull and, and how right. it can help realtors make more money by using a, a like. And again, every lender probably has the ability to do a soft pull. The difference with us is that we can take that soft pull and run it through DU or LP and, and issue a pre-approval. Most right. lenders, in order to run it through, have to do a hard credit. That's so we're right. unique in that respect. We can do a soft pull and issue a pre-approval. Yeah, which is really, which is unheard of. I mean, I know there's some, you said, there's some lenders who are part of the pilot program. And I know you've said eventually all lenders will probably have that access. But right now, it, the biggest thing to me is it gets rid of that, bar that, uh, that barrier you talked about, the obstacle of, oh, I don't want to pull my credit again or... I just had my credit pulled uh, at another lender that turned me down. I don't want, and the, so the soft pull is such a great way for you to give, or for us to take a look, have a second look and see what we can do. And then um, insulate that, that client from the competition. And if you have not had a phone call from a buyer, borrower who gets inundated by those phone calls, you are lucky because when they do, your phone blows up. Why? Because they're confused and they're like, why am I getting a hundred phone calls? I just got 10 text messages and I get all of that shouldn't be necessarily the way it is, but that is the way it is. And so uh, if you've ever been on the receiving end of a phone call from a buyer borrower, uh, trust me, you don't want to be there. And this is a way to avoid that uh, and at all costs and to keep the business with you. Like Kevin said, instead of somebody predatory trying to get it from you uh, and Absolutely. they do, they don't think they won't. Yeah, don't think they won't. That was good. Yes. Soft polls. I forgot about that one. Mm -hmm. I talk about that all day long and it is just such a unique uh, way, way to do business, way to save business and a way to encourage people who are, might be on the fence. Hey, let's take a look at what your buying power is. Uh, and this is a great way to do it. 
All right, Kevin, thank you so much. You're always amazing. We'll see you next week, guys. If you have questions, concerns, thoughts, have loan programs you want to talk about or any topic, we want to be your realtor partner who helps you succeed. All right, Kevin, thanks so much, guys. All right. Thank we'll you, buddy. See you soon. Have Bye, a good day. Everybody.